Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on the unit circle and clock on a Casio FX83 GTCW or 85 GTCW. We're going to have a look at the circle feature in the Mathbox app. Now I am doing this on an FX83 GTCW. The circle feature may be available in the Mathbox app on your model of calculator, but please note it is not available in the Mathbox app on all ClassWiz models. So you just need to check if it is there on yours. Also, before you start throwing your smartwatches away, the clock feature is not something that's used to tell the time. It is in fact used as a tool to measure the angles formed by the hands of an analog clock. But we will have a look at that a little bit later. First, we're going to have a look at the unit circle. So from the home menu, navigate to Mathbox and select circle. Now by default, the type is unit circle and you can just see it displayed at the top here. It's worth noting at this point that the angle unit that the calculator set in is degrees notified by this little d at the top here. That's going to be very useful later on. If we just press execute at this point, we can see the three options that are available. We've got the unit circle, the half circle, and there's the aforementioned clock feature. Back to the input screen, now we can input two angles at the time represented by theta one and theta two. Now, as our calculator is in degrees, we're going to input our first angles in degrees. So theta one, we're going to have as 30 and theta two as 45. And then once you're done, just press execute to confirm. And here we have the unit circle. Now, what this feature gives you is all three trigonometric ratios for your given angle. So you can see it there for a theta of 30, sine 30 is a half, cosine 30 is square root three over two, tan 30 is root three over three. So all of them are exact values there as we'd expect there with an angle of 30 degrees. If we navigate down, we can see theta two, which was 45. You can see both sine and cosine are given as root two over two, and tan of 45 there equals one. So we can do two angles at a time, and we can see them displayed on a little diagram of the unit circle there. Just press the return key to go back to the input screen. Let's try two other angles. This time I am going to try an angle without exact results. So I'm going to input a theta one of 18 and a theta two, which is greater than 180, so 225. And we'll press execute once we're done. And you can see here with the angle of 18, we have the trigonometric values displayed as decimal approximations, as no exact value can be given here. Navigate down to theta two. You can see that is greater than 180 degrees there, but we've got exact values there, negative root two over two for sine and cosine. And once again, tan of 225 is one. Let's return back to the input screen. Now, what if we have an angle that is in a unit other than degrees? Well, there's two options essentially. The first one is that we can change the default setting of the angle within the calculator to radians, for example. So let's do that now. Settings, then calc settings, angle unit, and then change from degree to radian, press OK, and then just press the return key to go back to the input screen. So let's try two angle measurements in radians. I'm going to go for pi over three and five pi over six. And once you've done that, then just press execute. You can see here, theta one, pi over three, we've got the exact trigonometric ratios there navigate down for theta two, five pi over six. And once again, we've got exact trigonometric ratios. Let's press return to go back. And let's just change the angle unit back to degrees. So it's settings, calc settings, down to angle unit, and then up to select degrees, okay. And press return. Now, let's take a look at the second option on this one. If we go and type and press OK, let's go down and select half circle and see what that looks like. Now, presumably on this mode, we can only give angles up to 180 degrees or pi radians. I'll also use this opportunity to show you how you can input, say, an angle in radians 
whilst the default angle unit of your calculator is degrees. Before I input the angle, which is pi over nine, I'm just going to put this into brackets and parentheses, and that is because we are going to input something after the angle, and we need it to apply to the whole of the fraction. So we're just gonna set up some brackets first, pi over nine, and then it's catalog, down to angle coord sexagesimal, and then choose radians. And you can see that there is an R displayed here. Now this indicates to the calculator that the value that we've inputted previously in the brackets there is a radian measure. And so we'll process it as such, even though the default setting is for degrees. And I'm going to input angle two, theta two as a degree measurement. I've already done that 180 degrees. So all we need to do now is press execute. And here we can see uh, pi over nine radians displayed. And we've got the decimal approximations of all three trigonometric values there. And then down to 180 degrees, you can see that's a little bit more simple. Sine and tan of 180 are zero, cosine is negative one. So that's the half circle. I'm not sure whether there's any real benefit for that over the full unit circle, other than just limiting your values to 180 degrees or less. So finally, let's go to type and take a look at the clock feature. Now we don't have any in input options here, so just press execute. And you can see by default, the hands of the clock are pointing at 12. Now what we're going to do is to progress around in increments around the clock by using the arrow keys. And theta one will display the smaller angle, the minor angle formed, and theta two will display the major angle, the greater of the two angles as we go around. So let's just take a look. I'm just going to use the up arrow to go on a journey around the clock then. So we go from 12 o'clock to one, we're following the angle formed between the hour hand and the minute hand. You can see that the smaller of the two angles, theta one is 30 degrees. That's going clockwise. And the greater of the two angles there, theta two is 330 degrees all the way around. And we can progress as such. So two o'clock would be 60 and 300 and so on and so on to six o'clock, which are both 180. Now, if we're following the progress of this clockwise, we now switch to theta two, where we can see that's 210. It's still the greater angle and theta one gets smaller as we go round. So slightly strange there. If we're just considering, say, the clockwise angle formed, we have to switch them from theta one to theta two and vice versa if we're thinking about the other way around there. And incidentally, you can go backwards as well. You can use the down arrow to move anti-clockwise or counterclockwise around the clock there. So there we go, that is the unit circle and the clock feature. I think this is probably most useful as perhaps a teaching tool more than something that's got a very direct use in terms of calculations and answering questions. Whether it's of any benefit to you to get all three trigonometric ratios at one time, it's a real shame I haven't been able to find a way of being able to take those values out and then use them in calculations. Comment below if you have. Therefore, it really limits the use of it as a a calculation tool essentially to be able to use in questions, but is good as maybe a teaching tool to be able to explore the unit circle. The clock feature itself, I consider it as a bit of a novelty. Casio perhaps just fancied putting a, a different feature on the calculator just to make uh, some models a little bit more unique. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you think there will be any use for this particular feature. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.